Hello and welcome to another, I was going to say episode, but uh, we're not doing South African episodes of the TV show. So now it's welcome to another Matt and Don talk rubbish about motorcycle news. And I've got Don on the Skype. Don, my old son. Nice hey. to see you. Uh, you're looking remarkably healthy, remarkably happy. How's life under the virus? Well, yeah, you kind of just sit at home without any other human beings. I mean, what could be better? You know what I mean? I think what, tell you what could be better is not having other, any other human beings while you're riding a motorcycle. That could be significantly better. But on the plus yes. side, I don't have to see other humans. I occasionally see you on a digital screen and that's it. So life is good. So you're happy. I must admit, I'm still very happy. I'm uh, still taking in a bit of sun, still walking the dogs and enjoying that very much. Life with my wife here in a tiny little French hamlet. So, yeah, I feel very, very far away. I only see what's going on because of the news. I've got a sister in Switzerland. I've got mates in South Africa, my family in the UK. And I've got a, a dog. Places are getting it hard. <laughs> but we hope that you're safe and like us, just basically still trying to enjoy life and waiting for everything to open up again. I'm desperate for it to open up again for, for a very selfish reason because I want to ride a motorbike. And in fact, my own motorbike. Don, you've got my motorbike. I hope you're taking good care of it. Have you had the chance to ride it? No, I've got your motorbike. Oh. It is sitting safely in my garage. Uh, no one's touched it. It's got its own like hallowed area that like no one is allowed near. But no, I haven't had a chance to ride it on account of that. The only reason I'm allowed to ride it is if I were going shopping. And quite frankly, I've done that twice. And it's not enough to carry. So maybe I should make an excuse. I've got a tank some... bag on it and I've got a tail bag. There's plenty. How much shopping do you do? Don't answer that. Don't answer that. It's fine. Let's get on to the motorcycle stuff. And I think it's obvious, mate, that the big news at the moment is from BMW. It's the R18 Cruiser. I was going to say concert because I was lucky enough. It was last year at the Concorso d'Eleganza, which is a, a kind of posh motor show exhibition type of thing held on the shores of Lake Como. Uh, I saw it there in concept form. It, it was very, very impressive. Um, and I have to say, it seems to have come through that concept to production stage pretty much unscathed, as much as, as production bikes can. Before I get into what I think about it, Don, uh, first chance with all the, the photos and the videos that you've had a, a good luck look at it, I suppose. What do you think? Can, can I tell you why I'm surprised? I'm surprised because a lot of people don't like it. And I don't understand that personally, because I rather mm. like it. I mean, a big 1800cc boxer fans either. must be magnificent. Okay, so where do you get the idea that not, not many people like it? Is that just what's being said on all the forums and type of thing? Yeah, is this it? is a foreign concept to Matt. It's called social media. And I don't know if you noticed, he's not a terribly social person in any, any sort of way whatsoever. <laughs> he likes his dogs, he likes his yeah. wife, and that's about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just on social media, there's a whole lot of people. Oh, no, ugly. Oh, no, terrible. Oh, no, what is that? Oh, no. And I'm kind of, I don't know. And I'm looking hey. at it, the detail of it and all that. One of the things I really do like is the fact that you know, while everybody's now harking back to their heritage, ooh, heritage, heritage, and people like Moto Guzzi have had to make up a heritage for certain motorcycles, as do many others. Um, BMW had 50 years of black motorcycles with fenders, if you know what I mean. Yes. Uh, you, go to, you go to a classic BMW meeting or something like that, everything looks exactly the same. They're all black, they're all the same shape, everything is exactly the same. And you feel kind of bad when all the sort of owners tell you, ooh, I really like that one, that's the best looking one. I'm like... It looks exactly the same as everything else. So the fact is that BMW have this heritage going back to 1923, and they're only really digging into that now. Why? What, what, what took yes. you so long? Well, I, yeah. I mean, I'm sure the designers had a good time with this. A little bit of me finds it cynical, but every company's in it to make money. So I'm pretty sure this was a, this was a directive from the marketing department at BMW. Hey, we need a cruiser to, to take on the big American market. Uh, why don't you make one? Rather than someone in design going, hey, I really want to make a cruiser. But nevertheless, yeah, you see the pictures of it side by side with the R5. Remarkably similar. I love on the new model that they've, you know, mimics the hard tail. They've got that yes. fishtail exhaust on it in chrome, which is, I'm not convinced about, to be honest. It's one of the few bits of the bike I, I don't particularly like. I love the uh, little digit. In fact, I love the fact that they've, they've managed to keep a lot of the cabling hidden away, like they had on the uh, concept bike. The engine itself, that 1800cc massive boxer motor, is an engineering delight. It really is beautifully presented, nice and clean. And uh, wow, I mean, we're talking, I think, nearly 160 Newton meters of torque and about 91 horsepower, which immediately makes it 
more of an impressive engine than anything that its well, American competitors really Yeah, I mean, we've been hearing a lot of people have been saying that it makes less horsepower than an R9T, which is completely true. It does. But it makes more than 150 newton meters between 2,000 and 4,000 RPM. And from what I can work out, it only revs to about 5,000. So for most of its yeah, rev rate, it's seven, making above like 150 newton meters of torque. That is something. That is proper. That is properly something. Yes. Yes, and that's what cruisers are about. The horsepower yeah. is largely irrelevant. But I'm telling you, at 91, that's that's probably more than just about any CVO Harley Davidson. That's for sure. So it's already on the money. It it really does look the part. The only thing I'd take issue with BMW about is um, they've had a series of videos that you know building up to the release of this thing, and then I saw the latest video. What are you thinking? BMW, the most cheesy, corny... I've never fast-forwarded through a video so quickly in my life just to find the bit where I could look at the bike. A load of... Sorry, they were Americans. They were cheesy, I don't know, influencers. Like Don says, I'm no social media guru. I, I don't even have a Facebook page. But yeah, just cheesy. It almost put me off the bike before I'd even seen it. I mean, stop with that rubbish. Just rubbish, rubbish, horrible rubbish, cheesiness. Don't ever do it again. <laughs> Unless it's me and Don that you're paying to do it, and then that'll be better. Am I out of order there, or did you enjoy it? Uh, I, I, I don't really look at promo videos. They're always, to me, they're all slightly cheesy. It's like they get like the sort of epitome of what they think this biker should look like. And of course, motorcycle designers and no, marketers in particular have no idea what real motorcyclists look like. So I tend to kind of ignore them all. I just look at the bike. I don't That's look at the cheesy actor riding it. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, but the bike I itself, think they were meant to be genuine. In the, I, I don't know. It made me want to stab myself in the eye with a coffee cup. So uh, <laughs> we'll move on from that. I think the bike, I don't understand anyone who, who thinks the bike is ugly. It's not. Even for someone who's not into cruisers, it's a lovely looking thing, and uh, I think BMW are going to have, you can say this, I'm going to say they're going to have a success on their hands, but, but getting into that American market with anything that isn't an American V-twin is very difficult. I will say one thing though, Don, one problem I foresee, many, many broken shins on those massive pots that stick out, which is a roundabout way of saying, in terms of the American market, the one thing that can't do is have the traditional foot forward yes. riding position. Yeah, they've had so, that sort of You know, you've got to sit like you're sat on the toilet. Yeah, they're sort of stuck because they foot, they have a whole lot of engine in the way. So they can't actually do yes. the whole forward forward thing. But uh, So they've got kind of like muscle bike sort of roads to foot pegs on a cruiser. I'm kind of hoping that works though. My favorite is, no, have you seen yes, the ape hanger bars that you get as an off Brilliant. Market? Brilliant. Probably incredibly impractical and, and make uh, any ape hangers I've used in the past, they, they don't you know, they feel cool and you keep your armpits really, really chilled on a hot summer's day. But apart from that, they make actually riding and controlling the bike fairly awful. But yeah, they look fantastic. <laughs> uh, um, what else are we doing? Okay. That, sorry, mate. There's just, uh, so that's, that's going to be called a first edition. There will be baggers and, you know, big tourism stuff coming along. Congratulations to BMW, I think, at this stage, until we ride it. Got no idea now, obviously, when that's going to be, but uh, as soon as we do ride it, we'll bring it to you. Uh, let's move on to something a little bit more, well, I was going to say light-hearted, but behind it is a sad story. Remind people, Don, about Norton and a certain Stuart uh, Garner, he's called. Yeah, our favourite friend. Um, he took over Norton, and it looked all promising. They had all these great motorcycles, and now it's all gone to a bag of poo. <laughs> yes. How else do you say it? Um, <laughs> what is it? Okay, so they they filed for kind of bankruptcy or whatever the equivalent is in England. But I mean, it's 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 gotten worse. I mean, he took a whole lot of people's pensions, and, and I I forget the actual numbers, but he put all, got a whole lot of people to invest millions into his business as pensions, and now they're all stuck. He kind of conned them, and he took a whole lot of government money. He took a whole lot of all sorts of things. And now the latest one we've seen from Mr. Garner is that he sold the rights to the nine six one motor to a company called Jing Long in China. And that was just before the bankruptcy. So he was just moving. That's an amazing coincidence, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Just before the bankruptcy. I'm sure he got paid in cash as well in a big kind of spa plastic bag or something. Unbelievable. So totally, it appears he total uh, uh, owes around 30 million pounds or South African viewers, that's about 600 million bucks. Uh, so he's done quite well out of that. Uh, he did also manage to annoy someone you don't want to annoy. His nickname is McPint. You'll know him as uh, John McGuinness. Uh, 
probably, I think he is now. Was he more successful than Dunlop at the Isle of Man TT? I'll have to look that up. He might be. Thereabouts. So I think he did actually become more successful, more race wins. Uh, so McGuinness came back to the Isle of Man after a year off, I think it was, with injury. And um, he was riding for Norton. And he, uh, earlier this year, stuck out a tweet, didn't he? Saying, oi. Has anyone seen Stu? I think he was looking to get paid. <laughs> um, now we've just had another dig. Now McGuinness has been helping a uh, local cancer, uh, a, a kid with cancer, uh, raising money for her, I believe it is, and uh, auctioned off a photograph. In fact, we can show it you here, a photograph of him in his Norton leathers. And it's signed at the top with, uh, I forget the exact words, but um, where's that, that Stu bloke who's a... Yeah, I don't know how to say it <laughs> Who's a scene? Who's a? Scene you know what Tuesday. I mean. Who's a cur? Who's a cur? Anyway, so uh, yeah, uh, Stuart Garner leaving a trail of destruction wherever he goes. Uh, moving on, Don. Another concept. This time from Honda. Tell me about the Honda CBF. Do you like it? Uh, it's um. Well, it's basically it's a CB one thousand R that they've kind of put some clothing that looks vaguely like something out of the 80s. And um, I don't know, well, I'm it's not meant entirely to, convinced. It, it's meant to closely mimic or pay homage to the Honda CB900F, which, which was an important bike for them. And I mean, I've ridden it, it's, what are we looking at? That bike must be over 40 years old now, I think. We're talking yeah. 1980s, are we? 30, nearly 40, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, no, I just, the whole thing really irritates me. It, it smacks to me of lazy design. It smacks to me of, ooh, Kawasaki have done a really successful one. Why can't we have a slice of that pie? It, uh, yeah, just tired, old, think of something new, Honda. That's, uh, that's, that's just lazy as far as I can see. It, you know, it's got the round headlight. It's got the bloody same shape of the tank and all that sort of thing. Uh, I'm sure it'll be very nice. But um, yeah, I'm looking for, for something more than just nice out of the uh, new bikes these days. So Honda, I suppose on the back of the Fireblade, we can give you a few things. By the way, keep watching the YouTube channel. Don was working before the lockdown on uh, a test of the Fireblade. We'll be putting that up in the next few days. Uh, moving on, moving on. Let's talk about Eichmer because this happens. This is the massive uh, show in Milan every year. Um, biggest bike exhibition in the world. Um, November, Milan. November in Milan this coming November, not going to happen already for BMW who pulled out for safety concerns and hard on the heels of BMW, Don, I, I hear now that um, KTM has pulled out. I, uh, remember, I think what we said, I don't know if we said it last time, yeah, BMW's pulled out, KTM has pulled out. I'm starting to think this might be the end of the big shows because in the old days, I mean, people had to have them because the only way journalists could actually do anything was to physically stand next to the motorcycles take all the photos and then send it by post, you know, all the, all the negatives and everything like that by post with the story written on a typesetter back to wherever it is that got, they got published. Nowadays, they don't need to do that. I mean, physically standing next to the motorcycle is great, but to spend all that money, and I mean, you've seen the size of some of those stands. I mean, there's millions of euros shoved into those yep. things. Um, is it worth it? Because nowadays you, 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 you see a presentation, you see the bike there in the distance, and then they say, oh, don't worry about it. They used to give us a big press pack full of everything. Nowadays, they say, well, no, just go into our, our media site. Here's the password and download it. It's like, why does anyone yes. need to actually be there? Yes, uh, I think you've hit the nail on the head. I kind of hope that it doesn't happen. It's nice to go and meet up with your colleagues from around the world and to go yeah. and see and touch the bikes in the flesh. Quite oftentimes, these bikes do look significantly different in the flesh oftentimes even better than they do in the photographs. But uh, yeah, you may have hit the nail on the head there. Certainly Eichma is under pressure this year. I'm sure we'll see other manufacturers follow. Uh, the Italians are a little bit upset, understandably. And I think BMW and KTM maybe pulled the plug a bit early because, you know, if we can get over this in the next few months or at least start to recover in the next few months, what better than to rejuvenate the bike world and the world in general and industry in Italy and around the world than, than having some kind of celebration which ICMA would be. So a bit disappointed in BMW and KTM, but I'm sure they won't be the only ones. Don, your favourite subject in the whole wide world, MotoGP. Yeah. Have you got any good I mean, news for me? This is the saddest thing that's ever happened. Um, they interviewed, well, I call him Caramel Espitada, 
Carmelo Espaleta, or whatever his name is. Uh, he's the head of Dorna, the company that runs MotoGP. And he seems, and I kind of have to agree with him, he seems very doubtful that anything's actually going to happen this year, that there is going to be a 2020 championship at all. Uh, on the grounds that they can't really do anything until, he seems to think they can't actually do anything until there is an actual vaccine that comes out for this coronavirus thing, this COVID-19. And I, yeah, I just don't see it. I mean, they might stop all the lockdowns and all of that, but I mean, there's still going to be travel restrictions. There's still going to be, uh, you know, limits on public gatherings. There's still going to be all of that. The only thing I can see them doing, and this is something I, I would do. I mean, if I, if I were him running it, I would do this, is that start the season in somewhere like October, November. Run it through until like April next year. I mean, the, during, during the December, January months, you host them all in the warmer places and in the Southern Hemisphere. And then you start the 2021 season in July and you run that till the end of the year. And you sort of do that until like the following season you start in April. You know what I mean? And you sort so of- So 2022, you'd be back to normal. Why not? Why not? I agree with you. We're all desperate to see racing coverage, uh, but I think you've, you've also, you bang on again, Don, that um, in the interest of safety and given the fact that uh, traveling will be so restricted, uh, I think you're right. They, they might wait until there's a vaccine and by all accounts, that could be well into next year, mm. uh, even towards the back end of next year. So we're just going to have to keep our eyes on that. Um, enough rambling, I think, matey. I'm glad to see you looking good. Oh, by the way, you haven't seen this yet. I just want to uh, show you this. This came through from, um, can you see that, my old son? You helped YouTube. us get that. YouTube, YouTube. it's that. a partner award. Uh, it says, presented to the bike show for passing 100,000 subscribers, which, um, which amazes me on many, many, many levels <laughs> because we know how rubbish we are and, um, <laughs> You know, one thing we've never done, listen to all of you, seriously, I mean, wow. Thank you very much for subscribing. You know what? what? Not once on any video we've ever had have we ever asked anyone to subscribe. So maybe we should do that. You're the social media -y thingy guru. I don't know about doing all this stuff. So should we put a subscribe button or something? Or t Please subscribe. No, okay, Probably yeah, yeah, here we go, here we go. Here, but... Matt lives in France, so don't worry about him. I live in Africa, so technically, I was born and raised in Africa, so technically I'm a poor African child. Please subscribe to the channel. I know it's rubbish, I know everything we do is utterly terrible, but for, you know, look into your heart, this poor African child. I've got two dogs to feed, one is trying to pull my sound device off my lap over here. Well, I can um, see your cat. What's the black and white cat called? That's in the background. No, I've got a dog who's genuinely Look, over trying your to... left shoulder. Listen, I've got, I've got a sound thing sitting on my lap here. This is very professional. And he's trying to pull it onto the floor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's keeping up the high production values of the bike show. We hope that all you guys are keeping safe, that you're managing to stay sane under these lockdown conditions. And like you, we hope everything uh, gets lifted as soon as possible. But the main thing is, much as it pains you and us, stay safe, stay in lockdown. And we'll see you again with some more motorcycling rubbish very soon.